Hey, what's going on? More Magnus Carlsen for you from the uh, FIDE World Rapid uh, in Dubai. The Rapid Championship, uh, this is day one still. And <clears throat> Magnus with the white pieces, the only one with white pieces on day one. Made two draws with black. Here he's playing against uh, Ernesto in Arkiev. Rated 26.82, and his first name, Ernesto, I believe was uh, after Ernesto Che Guevara, the rebel leader, and yeah, that's your interesting factoid of, of the day, but let's go on to the game, Magnus with white, uh, we've already seen him open with 1t4 and 1e4. So far in this tournament, here he went for 1d4, and we had c4 g6, so black still hasn't uh, announced if he's going to play the king sentient with bishop g7 or the Grunfeld with d5. But the white kind of eliminates it with f3. And this is a flexible move, uh, only a bit of flexible, it's, uh, the word is more... Uh, Forcing because you kind of can't get a real Grunfeld now. If you go for the Grunfeld, you get completely different type of positions where white goes for a, a big initiative and with a big center. Sometimes attacking on, on the king side real quick with knight c3, bishop out, queen up, and pushing the h pawn. Completely different kind of game and that doesn't suit all uh, Grunfeld players, but I believe uh, Inarkiev is mostly a King's Indian player, if I remember correctly. So he plays here c5, and after d5 we're going to transpose to, uh, <coughs> well, more or less a Benoni with f3. So this position you can get from either a Benoni or a... Uh, or King Cynthia. So Bishop G5. At some point, Black has to play E6 to uh, free up his position a little bit and uh, attack the, uh, the pawn chain. Black goes H6. Bishop goes back to E3 and now E6. White seemingly wins time by attacking H6, but Black started by taking on E5. And now rook e8, and here's a well-known motif that you just have to know, all for both sides actually. The king Indian, you can't really take here. It looks good, but no cigar. You can uh, actually take here on e4, followed by check here, and then take this bishop. Yeah, I'm even wondering if uh, yeah, this is probably enough. Just take here. And this is uh, good for black because now we have an unopposed bishop with a great diagonal and many weaknesses in the white camp. Black squares. <coughs> so this pawn can't be taken, so knight gt. Knight g2 e2 by Carlson. Knight bt7, and usually this knight is going to g3, but Carlsen had other ideas, he went with a knight to c1, back on a6, and usually white is uh, stopping the b5 advance, a6 is preparing b5, so most often a4 is the stock, uh, the stock kind of antidote to that, but Carlsen simply allowed uh, b5, he went to bishop e2, Black didn't go uh, b5, so maybe now he's worried about white actually taking on h6. Because now if, uh, let's say b5. I'm just wor uh, wondering about this right now. It still looks dangerous, but uh, maybe, you know, if, if we go the same line. Maybe now we can take on d6. That's the difference. Now the bishop is on e2. 
Which means uh, the knight which was pinned on e4 before is no longer pinned. So that might be the difference, and that might be why uh, Inarchy have went h5 here. Uh, Carlson castled. Knight h7. Okay, opening up the bishop. We want e5, e5 for the knight. And sometimes black plays f5 to try and uh, free his game on the king side. Carlson went to knight d3, knight e5, and now the knight to f2. And from f2, looks passive, but it's also in the future preparing f4. Because now this knight is lending support to this e4 pawn. And also we're uh, uh, protecting the g4 square if something uh, were to arrive on that square after we play f4. So now to b5, uh, which Carlton simply allows. But his idea is to uh, sort of to restrain black. Okay, you, you allow him to come a little bit forward, but, but then you stop him in his tracks. And he goes a3. <clears throat> Here, uh, anything like b4 or c4 is more or less out of the question. In that case, played rook b8 and now b4. So, why is cutting down on the dynamic options that uh, black has on, on the queen side? I mean, c4 look, looks seemingly good. You know, protect the pass pawn, but on the other hand, Think about this. A knight is a great blockader. Uh, I was not going to move it. Ah, okay, continue. The knight is a great blockader. And we also have a great d4 square here for our bishop. And furthermore, we're going to follow up with oh, like a4. Maybe not immediately, but in the near future. If we take, our pawns are broken up. If we don't take, let's say something like this. And white has the A file at his disposal. This blockading knight is attacking the, the B5 pawn. This will come to D4. And from here, white can uh, sort of play on both sides of the board. He can try to build up on the A file, but at some point he's going to play F4. And things can get quite tricky for black. So Inarchiev took on b4, and this means that he, he'd rather have the c4 square for a piece. I'll try and use that. Okay, bishop b7, f4. So Carlson pushes the knight away before he can uh, arrive on c4, uh, protected by a rook. Seems like he's more okay with it coming to c4 now when he just takes it and gets the d4 square. And black's pieces are restricted. If we play knight c4 here, probably takes. We have the d4 square when we want with the bishop. And note that this bishop is is restricted by the white pawns. So knight back to d7. Now bishop to d4. Rook c8. Carlson wants to contest the c file. So notice that white just has a safe and rather stable uh, space advantage. Nothing uh, too critical or serious yet, but typical Carlsen, he, uh, he gets these small edges and uh, just nurtures them and, you know, takes it home in the end game. And guess what? That's exactly what happened here. Knight b6 was played, knight e2. And notice, like we talked about earlier, this knight is lending uh, important support to this e4 pawn. Inarchy took on c1, knight b7, Carlson exchange on g7. <coughs> and this weakens uh, black squares in black's camp. Queen b2 check, and queen f6. Um, it's an option to keep the queens on, but Carlson liked the end game here, and he took an f6 and played g3. And the idea here is simply, I think, to uh, lend support to the, to the center with the king, bring him closer so you can free your pieces to move. Knight jumped into c4, 
And yeah, this is a temporary sacrifice. I mean, if black does nothing, you know, the king comes to f3. You can play knight d4 to c6. White is overall uh, uh, better here. So jump to c4. And his idea here is uh, if rook takes c4, which uh, cousin didn't do. And you can take up d5. And probably even black is better now. I will take here, and now this pawn is weak. And white all of a sudden needs to uh, watch out. So therefore, Carlson simply added protection with knight c3, protecting this pawn, which was attacked. Knight d7. So he wants to maneuver this knight to b6 to uh, cover the c4 pawn, which is now attacked laterally by the rook. Knight b6. Knight d1, and this knight is jumping to e3 to attack the, the c4 pawn. Also to, to, to protect d5. So takes at knight e3, and now we got full protection on the d5 pawn. This is back to c8, and now comes on top of e4. He regained the pawn, and now the pawn on c4 is really just a, uh, a sitting duck. Also d6 at some point is attacked. Uh, Minarchy played c3 and things are starting to go a bit downhill here for black. King f2 covering this knight, so now this knight can actually move. Bishop b7. So now Carlsen has simply won a pawn with, uh, with skillful maneuvering here. And it's actually quite, quite impressive how he makes it look so easy against uh, really, really, really strong grandmasters. Uh, rook e7, h3, it's just a matter of technique now, he's, he's won the pawn, this guy remains quite bad here, and for Carlsen this is almost a picnic, f5, takes, knight takes, now d6 is falling, it's just, it's a buffet man. And notice the technique, you know, now the knight is protected by the pawn, and the rook is protecting all the pawns. And protected by the knight. So everything is protected. Now just bring the king to uh, shelter. Or support the d6 pawn in, in its promotion. One check on b7, king to c8, no further checks. The pawn is coming to d7. Game over. And I thought this was quite impressive and yet another typical Magnus win. Seemingly effortless, but that's the beauty of it to make it look so easy when it when it isn't, and this certainly uh, reminds people of, of how uh, Anatoly Karpov, old champion, used to uh, beat people back in his uh, peak playing days. But okay, so Magnus is in uh, after the five rounds on day one. He's on four out of five, but there are three players with four and a half. But we'll see how he does on day two.